Hey everybody, and welcome back to Mondays with me, Dr. Crystal, and today with Dr. Heather. You got it this time. Yeah, getting used to it. <laughs> so we are at Topsail Beach. I learned my lesson. I called it Topsail because that's how it's spelled, but apparently it's Topsail. So we are in North Carolina. I'm on vacation, visiting Heather. Thoughts? Um, I'm just really happy to be at the beach for the first time with you and our friends. Yes, yeah, so this is our first time at the beach together. We are actually Heather is about to finish residency in a couple of weeks, so this is her retreat with her class. So we got about nine other doctors over there, um, but we're not going to call them over for this. Also, Dr. Crystal is taking time away from us being on the beach because she loves her fans. We already <laughs> started making for plans for after the video. We're going to go in the ocean and have a drink there. Yeah. So today we are going to talk about injuries and illnesses that can happen while at the beach. Is that right? Yep. Okay. This breeze feels good. Feels good. All right. Jellyfish stings. You get stung by a jellyfish. Dr. Heather gets stung by a jellyfish today. Oh no. What are you doing? What are you going to do? Are you going to ask your wife to pee on you? I don't know. I'm just not sure. <laughs> no! No! That is a myth, people. If you pee on somebody with a jellyfish sting, it can actually make it worse. You're going to make their pain worse. Because when a jellyfish comes with their little tentacles and they get on you, they have these things in it called nematocysts. And those release the poison. And if you pee on her, it's going to make them release more poison. Ah. <laughs> we don't want that. In some countries, there's poisonous jellyfish, but we're just talking about the ones in the United States. Yeah. So if you are somewhere where you know that there are like poisonous jellyfish, you should look up the wildlife before you get there. One of them's in Australia. It's called the Australian box jellyfish. If you get stung by, <laughs> if you get stung by one of those bad boys, you better be in the ED stat. Stat. If you just go to Australia in general, you need to look up the animals because they have the most poisonous animals. Yeah. All right, so we're not going to pee on these jellyfish stings, but what are we going to do? What are we going to do, Dr. Heather? We are going to make sure we remove the tentacles. Yes. Step one, remove the tentacles. So, like, if they sting you, you might have tentacles stuck to you. Get those suckers off. Not good. Not good. Um, step two. Step two seawater yes rinse off with seawater so you're if you're getting stung by a jellyfish you're either right by the ocean probably or in the ocean unless you're like uh, i don't know are there jellyfish at the zoo the air aquarium i don't know anyways so you want to rinse it off with seawater and you don't want to rub it so seawater to just basically get those nebanasis those things that we were talking about we want to get them off you can't see them but if you rub it, they can release the venom. So you want to rinse with seawater. Step three is going to be warm, specifically warm water or heat pack. Yes, cold water can make it worse. So you want to maybe get back to the hotel, the beach house, maybe run a warm bathtub and get, get it in there and that'll help with the pain. Yeah. All right? Got it. Don't freaking pee on it, people. Just don't. You will get pregnant and die. What do you want to talk about next? I mean, I know this is boring, but I feel like it's probably one of the most realistic common problems at the beach. Dehydration. I think that's important, and I definitely think we should talk about it. I feel a little thirsty right now. Same. So most of the time when you're at the beach, it's going to be hot. It's going to be sunny. A lot of times you're going to be drinking alcohol. All if you're above 21. If you're above 21, you might be enjoying a nice Bud Light Lime like I was 30 minutes ago. And these things put you at higher risk of dehydration. So, what, are, what do you think our recommendations should be for these fine people? I think we just need to consciously think about it and remind all of our friends and family when we're at the beach, keep drinking water, keep drinking fluids, because it's easy to forget about because you're just having so much fun at the beach. There's so many activities to do. Yep. Make sure if you feel like you're getting overheated, you're drinking enough water and find some shade if you need to. There is no party foul for going inside for an hour, taking a break, and then coming back out. 
We just did it. Yep. We just took a break. And having an umbrella or some covering out in the sun that you bring with your group. Right. So there are a lot of different heat illnesses starting from just mild dehydration all the way to heat stroke. So we wanna make sure we don't get there because a heat stroke is a medical emergency and that's when you see like those athletes dying and all of that because they just get way overheated, temperature goes way up, organ failure. We don't want none of that at the beach. We're on vacay here. Yeah. So if people are getting nauseous, vomiting, not acting like themselves, being confused. Those are all signs to look for. They're probably not gonna have a thermometer on the beach to check people. So if you think someone's getting overheated, try to cool them down and get them medical attention if you think they need it. All right. All right. Some water. I think that we only have time to talk about one more thing because I need to get back in that water. Thoughts? Completely agree. Last thing? All right, so we saved the best for last. This is something that's super rare, but everybody is always talking about it, and that would be shark bites. And so we are in North Carolina right now. Thoughts about that? I didn't know about this until we got here and everyone was talking about it, but there was a shark attack within the past couple weeks. Right, someone lost their leg. A young girl lost her leg. So this, although rare, is a very real thing that can happen. So we are gonna treat a shark bite like any major trauma. So hopefully if somebody gets bit, somebody's gonna be there to get them out of the water. Before you run in to grab your friend who just got bit by the shark, we need to assess the scene. Yes, like any dangerous situation outside of the hospital, even inside the hospital. So if the person who's going to help their friend is not safe, um, then they can't help their friend. So you wanna make sure that you're looking all around your surroundings, are there any other dangerous activity going on? Do you see other sharks? Are there boats nearby that you could get injured from? Make sure that shark is gone. We don't want a shark bite times two. Yep, for sure. All right, so let's say you're at the beach with your friend and she gets bit in the leg, but somebody pulls her out. What do you think the first thing we should do is? Assess for bleeding. I agree, because if someone has a huge shark bite and they are losing blood quick, there's some big arteries in the leg. And so people can lose blood really quickly. If you lose all your blood, you're done for. There's nothing you can do. So how do you, so they're bleeding a lot. Now what? Apply a tourniquet. Yeah. So, I mean, you're probably not gonna have a medical grade tourniquet here on the beach. So if someone's gotta lose their top to make a tourniquet, then you, gotta do it I don't know yep but it but it does have to be something sturdy and you have to get it as tight as possible the whole purpose is to cut off the blood flow to that limb that's losing the blood so another important step to applying the tourniquet is you want to make sure that it is proximal to the bleed so that means closer to the center of your body so if they get bit in the calf down here you want to make sure you're tying a tourniquet up here because if you tie it below, that's not going to help. It's not going to stop the bleeding because the blood flow is still getting to that area. Another important thing about applying the tourniquet is writing the time on the tourniquet. If you can, if you have anything to write with whatsoever, even if that's some sort of food item or anyone who has a pen or marker or anything, just because that can help determine if the limb is salvageable. When they or get the since everyone has cell phones these days, just mark it in your phone. Timestamp. You could even, I don't know, like throw out a tweet about it, like, yo, it's 423, just applied a tourniquet to my bro. No. Oh, no, that's a good idea. <laughs> but I'm not as good at social media as you. <laughs> so I'm <sighs> Follow me on Twitter, Dr. Crystal MD. <laughs> Shout out. Obviously, after that, you want to get these people medical care as soon as possible, so while this tourniquet thing is happening, somebody else should be calling 911 or getting ready to rush this person to the hospital. Right. It's so important to get these people medical care as fast as possible because they might lose a limb, but if you don't get them there, could they continue to lose blood? They're gonna die. And so I'd rather be without a leg than dead. Same. <laughs> we about done. <laughs> That's a wrap. Cut. That's a wrap. Well, we got to do our outro, babe. <laughs> so that is all we have for you today. We are going to go get back in the water there. 
Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below. You always say that, but I don't say that. Oh. But I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks, Dr. Heather. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. That was a delayed kiss. Like, you didn't want to. Come on, give me, give me some sugar. Give me some sugar. <laughs> Lean forward with me. Make a face or make a cool face. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Bye. Ooh. There was a bee. Ah! Yes. Put your hands like more like here instead of like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, say it again. You touched your face. Like. Oh, I had to put my push my sunglasses on. It's one o'clock p.m. Well, obviously it's one o'clock. Yeah. <laughs>